ideas, all new behaviors, arise from an interconnection of other ideas, of other behaviors, of other knowledge, of previously established knowledge. The process by which this interconnection occurs is both orderly and predictable. I'm actually going to show you some graphs shortly to show you how this works in the laboratory. And one can engineer the emergence of creative behavior very precisely. One can engineer it, one can accelerate it by taking control over the kinds of separate behaviors or pieces of knowledge that are available to become interconnected. Make all assignments open-ended. Don't ever give a closed, a bounded assignment such as, give me three new ideas by tomorrow. Never do that. Always make it, give me at least three. Give me as many as possible. And it should never be by tomorrow. It should be at the latest by tomorrow. Making assignments open-ended increases productivity and creativity, typically by a factor of two, within the same time frame. Now, I'm going to give you permission to do something which no authority figure has ever asked you to do, has ever given you permission to do. That is, together, you and I, we are going to spend the next couple of minutes daydreaming, having a daydream. And for the next couple of minutes, I'd like you just to let your minds wander. During our brief daydream, how many of you left this room? If you left this room, just please raise your hand. Oh my, my goodness, that uh, looks like almost everyone left this room. Did someone go someplace very strange, very unusual, something impossible? Yes, sir, where did you go? You went in a fighter plane around the Matterhorn. These processes that generate these daydreams that we just had ever so briefly, those processes are operating all of the time in all of us. I call them generative processes. They underlie creative expression. When you have five or 10 or 20 people meeting for an hour, have them work on the problem together for 20 minutes, then shift them, have them go out of the room for about 10 minutes on their own to continue working on the problem. This is called a shift, a team shift. They work on the problem on their own, then they come back. The resource utilization is the same. They're still working for an hour. You get 50 to 100% more ideas with just one shift. Why? Because groups, although they're stimulating for creative purposes, they're also inhibiting. And when you shift people out of the room and they work on a problem on their own, they generate a lot on their own that they wouldn't have generated in the group. They come back together and pool the ideas. You end up getting contributions from more people. Fortune magazine at one point estimated that it took 10,000 ideas in business, 10,000 ideas, to generate one true innovation. How do we keep that pool of creativity large? How do we make sure that that pool keeps filling and keeps overflowing? And you need to set up what I call an innovation net. This was, again, that problem at General Motors that I mentioned in the beginning. You have to set up a system so that as, as hundreds, as thousands, as tens of thousands of new ideas flow into your system, uh, and it's easy, by the way, to up the number of ideas that come into your system easily by a factor of 10 or more easily, no matter what you're getting now. But then you have to have in place a net so that an, on an ongoing basis, uh, you have some way of screening the ideas and on a limited basis, of course, of implementing the ideas. You might think it's a problem when you get overrun by new ideas. In fact, I would argue it's the best problem you will ever have.